Once, an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeezed through its... <laughs> The workmen had hiked up to Shane's accident site and were picking up what was salvageable of the trucks. I swear, every truck on this island must be suicidal, laughed one. Well, I wouldn't like to be stuck if no engine was there to push me, replied another. Suddenly, a workman shouted, Look, I found something. It was a rusty object. Upon closer inspection, it appeared to be an engine part. It was taken back to Kirk Matchin, where Mr. Burain inspected it. He looked at it, and then at the engines, and then back again. What is it, sir? asked Ernest. There's only one engine that this could have come from, he said ominously. He paused and stared at the engines with a blank expression. Engines, almost a hundred years later, we have found wreckage of Godred. The year was 1900. The Coldy Fell Railway had just opened. There were five engines there at the time. Godred, Ernest, Wilfred, Coldy, and Shane Dooney. Godred, the number one, was named after King Godred of Sodor, whom had reigned in the 1900s. He was very proud of this, which made him perhaps one of the most conceited engines the island had ever known. He was extremely reckless, often coming down the mountain at a tremendous speed. The other engines warned him, but he never listened. Eventually, his arrogance got the better of him. In July of 1900, shortly after the railway had opened, Godred was coming down the top slope, being reckless as usual, when he suddenly derailed and rolled down the mountain. Miraculously, the coach stayed on the rails and the crew had jumped out. Godred, on the other hand, was practically wrecked and was never repaired. What happened next is the subject of debate, but it is agreed he was eventually scrapped. The four engines who were there at the time did not think the incident was a particularly fond memory. In fact, they never brought it up unless in the absolute need. The piece of wreckage that had now been found was truly shocking. So, is it true that his pieces were used to mend you guys? Asked Niles feebly. No, replied Ernest. Here's the thing, Niles. He was in pieces when he was brought back. Oh dear, shuddered Wilfred. Don't remind me of that. What do you think we should do with it? Said Eric. I think we should place it in the back of the shed as a memory of our number one, who tragically fell 98 years ago. And so they did. Placed above it was a plaque saying, In memory of number one, Godred, 1895-1900. The news soon spread quickly, and the next day reporters were already visiting the railway, taking pictures and notes. One reporter took pictures of all the engines. He was just about to leave, and was looking through the pictures on his camera, when he suddenly noticed something. He went over to Mr. Burain. Excuse me, sir. I think you better have a look at this. Mr. Burain glanced at the photo, and immediately his eyes widened. What the devil is that? He said. There, on the side of the picture next to Eric, appeared to be an outline of another engine, but it was so faint it was hard to tell who it was. The picture soon went into the news and media, Everyone was very confused. I think what must have happened is another engine whizzed by while the picture was being taken, and because it was so fast, it wasn't fully developed in the photograph, said Coldy. Maybe, said Mr. Burain. I mean, normally I'd say he tampered with the photo with an editing program, but he discovered it right on his camera. I don't recall anyone puffing around the yard when it was being taken, though. It must have been the ghost, shivered Eric. Rubbish, retorted Patrick. There's no such thing. There's no evidence to prove that they don't exist, said Wilfred. 
Yet there's no scientific evidence to prove that they do exist, laughed Shane Dooney. But even so, the engines all felt very uneasy. The next day, Wilfred stopped at Devil's Back Station on his way up to the summit. He saw another engine rolling down the steep line in the distance. I wonder who that could be, he muttered to himself as he relaxed in the warm sunlight. Oh, replied his driver. Up there, that's engine... Wilfred suddenly realized that the engine had gone. It was nowhere to be seen. What's a... I, sw I swear, I just saw an engine up there. Where did it go? He was very confused. You must have been seeing things, said the driver. The last train ahead of us has already passed by. Wilfred, who didn't know what to think, started his journey to the summit. It was a fairly calm day. It was wind, but it was light and gentle. But Wilfred couldn't stop thinking about what he had seen earlier. Then suddenly, there was a loud crashing noise. Wilfred and his crew were startled, and they slammed on the brakes. What was that? The driver cried. He checked Wilfred first, then ran over to the ledge and peered over. But there was nothing there. Was that an explosion? shouted the guard. No, said Wilfred. It's nothing with me, that's for sure. The crew checked all over the train to see if anything had happened, but everything was in perfect order. Everyone was very surprised and puzzled. So was Mr. Borain when he was told. There are some strange things going on right now, he declared. I heard a train approaching the crossing this morning, but nothing came. The engines, too, were very bemused. After the day's work was done, they talked about the events in the shed. Something's not right, protested Coldy. Isn't it obvious, replied Alaric. There's some paranormal activity going around. There was a long silence. The last time that word was used, said Ernest feebly, was in 1950, on July 6, 50 years from Godred's accident. A group of hikers claimed to have seen an engine derail and roll down the mountain. But at the time, we were all in our shed, so there couldn't possibly have been an engine out. No wreckage was found either, and everyone was very confused. Eventually, they concluded that the hikers must have seen something like an animal, but no engine had fallen off. Do you think it was Godred? asked Alaric. We can't be too sure, replied Wilfred. The engines were all silent until Patrick spoke out. These events were most likely pure coincidences. I think we should all stop telling ghost stories and try to get some sleep. Good idea, replied Coldy. And the engines did. Night fell quickly, and all the drivers had gone home. Wilfred was sleeping soundly until he was suddenly woken by hissing. Oh dear, he grumbled. Who's playing about at this hour? He looked out, but could see no engine. Eric woke too, and he was cross. Shut up, he barked. It's a far from dawn. Let an engine sleep. But the hiss kept coming and coming. Slowly, the other engines began to awaken. Patrick, is that you? grunted Shane. How could that be me? snapped Patrick. Guys, it's coming from the outside, said Ernest. Well, replied Alaric, when whoever that is comes back in, I'll show him a thing or two. Um, Alaric, quivered Wilfred, how could it be one of us if all eight of us are in the shed? There was a long silence. The engines all stared at each other in worry. Maybe it's a standard gauge engine, said Niles. Of course, duh, said Coldy. The engines were all relieved until Ernest spoke. From all my years here, there has never been an engine running at this time of night. There just aren't any services past midnight on the Peel Godred branch. Wilfred was about to reply when they heard puffing noises. They got louder and louder and louder. All right, what? going on? yelled a voice. The engines jumped. It was only Mr. Burain who had dashed in from his house. 
He froze when he realized all eight engines were in the shed. We don't know what's going on, sir, said Ernest. The puffing noises started again, and Mr. Borain looked out. Suddenly, Mr. Borain exclaimed, There's something out there! I can see it puffing away! Come on, Wilfred, let's go find out who this hooligan is. He immediately began building up Wilfred's fire, which did not take long to steam up because Wilfred was so frightened. Then, Wilfred set off into the night. He could now see a plume of smoke in the distance. I think it's Godred, cried Wilfred. I'm not gonna let Godred lurk around this railway, roared Mr. Bray. Full steam ahead! Then, they approached the crossing. The object seemed to suddenly screech to a halt, barely avoiding an accident. There, grumbling as usual, was George the Steamroller. Idiots! He grumbled. Mr. Moraine felt foolish. Oh dear, I am sorry, he chuckled. Oh fool, said George's driver. Didn't give a whistle. We were doing some road work at night because it would interfere with the traffic during the day. The gas-powered roller broke down, so they had to borrow us. Sorry about that, thought we'd let you know. Well, replied Wilfred, that solves the mystery. But what about the other events that happened recently? Mr. Borain thought for a minute. I don't know, Wilfred. I just don't know. However, regardless, I think we need to put Godred's wreckage back where it was found. Wilfred could only agree. They reached the site of Godred's accident just as dawn was breaking. Mr. Borain threw the piece down the mountain, where it rolled down, just like Godred. Wilfred stared out into the valley. If you're here, Godred, he said, we're sorry to have disturbed you. Mr. Borain climbed into Wilfred's cab. Oh, and also, added Wilfred ominously. You are forgiven. We forgive you for your reckless behavior. Now we will leave you in peace. And with that, he set off for home. After that, there were no other reports of strange activity. The engines still to this day don't know what happened, but they all agree that some things are better left unexplained. Mm -hmm.